Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Dr. Dale London Online this morning. My name's Matt. Hi, and I'm Yanni, and it's such a joy and a privilege to connect with you uh, in today's celebration. We have a cracking celebration lined up. Uh, a great time of worship yep. that Henry and the team have just led us in, Mountain Mover. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose that's something we really need. Absolutely. <laughs> in yeah, this yeah. time. Uh, and then we've got a cracking word by Matt in a few minutes. So a great time of celebration lying ahead. Great connecting with you. Uh, this is uh, the 1st of November. Can you believe it? Yeah, pinch punch. I know. First of the month. <laughs> Stay over there. <laughs> um, and we want to just know where it is that you're joining from. It's great to see already that we've got uh, a whole number of people connecting. Uh, John and Barbara are first online this morning. Wow, so uh, yeah. welcome, well guys. Done, it's great to see you. <laughs> and uh, Gordon and Jill, of course, are close behind. But we've got Steph. We've got... Cass, um, great connecting with you. Let us know where you're joining from this morning. Might mean that you just pick up your mobile phone or on a laptop, just type in where it is that you're joining from. Uh, but we are so delighted to see you this morning. Yeah, one of the things that we in our journey of faith never ever want to underestimate is the power of prayer. And so perhaps uh, if you have a prayer request, uh, don't you just want to press the prayer request button? Uh, and somebody from our online host team, yeah. as Matt has just mentioned, will be there to pray with you. Um, you know, there was a, in the week, there was a real surge of faith in my heart as far as prayer is concerned. And especially in the season mm. with last night's, mm. again, announcement uh, of lockdown coming to England. I know that some of the uh, people watching from wider, those in Wales, uh, you've already been in lockdown. But again, just to trust God with a sense of faith in our hearts. So if you have a prayer request... Uh, we'd love to pray with you. Please do engage that. And if you're watching, perhaps in the week you're doing some catch-up, 
you can always email us at prayer at uh, ddcc.org.uk. Somebody will be there to connect with you um, in terms of your prayer request. Thank you, Yanni. We've got uh, communion a little earlier on this morning. So if you don't have those elements with you, perhaps now is a great time just to reach and grab the bread and the wine because we'll be sharing communion in just a few moments. Our online hosts today are Alan and Gita. So thank you to you guys. Brilliant to serve uh, the family together. And um, if uh, in the morning you reach out for prayer, it's Alan and it's Gita who will be responding to your prayer requests ready to pray with you at any moment and so it's just great looking here at seeing who's with us yeah them awesome. o'briens we know Go you on. are justin and yvonne um rod great to see you welcome all the way from bantry in ireland yes. uh, it's great to connect with gareth and marty susan and jeff hello in wimbledon um this is great seeing so many names with us this yeah, morning awesome. and i just want to take a moment if i can uh, for those who are watching on youtube this morning a deep apology from our side that over the last few weeks uh, we've been struggling with the connection there's been something that's happened in the background with youtube we only caught up on that last weekend and this week we've righted it our team are so delighted and i'm so Yay. blessed by uh, the tech team for rallying together around this in the last week so uh, just so you know what's been happening there in the background i also want to encourage you uh, whilst we are not together in the same room to keep on giving online. If you head over to our website, uh, you can check out the Give Online button um, on our website. Remember that your giving together with our giving amplifies the work mm. of God in yeah. spaces yeah. and places, yeah. especially during the season uh, that we might not be able to reach in person, but we can carry on ministry. So do remember your giving makes a massive difference. Mm. And as we partner with that which God does in this season, what a joy and a privilege it is for us to keep on sowing. Uh, remember, seed must leave your hand, but mm. it will never, ever leave your life. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Great to see uh, the mayor has joined us this morning. Uh, welcome to you. Welcome to Dave Kempton. Great to connect with you. Uh, just before we do communion, uh, Yanni's mentioned that we're, there's a message a little later on. I, I was so privileged to put this together uh, for this morning. And uh, it yeah, is a really a word in season. I'm looking forward to it, man. <laughs> it's, it's a word in season. After last night's <coughs> announcement um, and everything that perhaps you were hearing in the news throughout the day, you might have been sent, filled with a sense of fear, frustration, anxiousness, um, all sorts of emotion. And it's been a very strange year and it is a strange time that we're in. And I just want to let you know, um, we're not robots. We feel this way as well. Um, and so we're navigating this, but this word, this message yeah. about generosity is a word in season. Um, it, it's something that we might think to ourselves, do you know, um, I'm not sure I can be. Well, let me tell you, uh, God wants to bring light into our world. God wants yeah. to bring hope into our world. And he does that when we say yes to him. Uh, that's why it's such a brilliant message this morning. Yeah. If I may say so, it's not my message. I really believe it's from God. Yeah. Um, but Yanni... Uh, let's share in communion together. Let's do communion. Um, I woke up this morning with uh, a scripture verse that I just it, I felt so impressed on my heart. Um, you know, when uh, Boris Johnson made the announcement last night, as far as England is concerned, moving us into lockdown, um, lots of emotions, lots of emotions to deal with, as I'm sure that you have also had to just uh, come to terms with certain things. But here's the scripture verse that I woke up with this morning in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18. And I want to read this as an introduction to our communion today. Um, this is what the Bible says. It says, let joy be your continual mm. feast. Make your life a prayer. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Mm. And, you know, as, as uh, this first little part of the scripture, you know, give thanks in all circumstances was the, the, was the portion that I woke up with. But when I went to the Bible and I started reading that, um, this is the will of God for you. Mm, mm, I, I mm. cannot tell you how that impressed on my mm. heart. I cannot tell you how that impressed um, just in my thinking and perhaps even in my attitude towards this day and the season lying ahead. Because this is the will of God for our lives. That we would continually feast on joy and that we would be thankful, not for all circumstances, but that we will be thankful uh -huh. 
in Brilliant. all circumstances. Mm. Brilliant. And so my question to you today is, as you face November, what are you thankful for today? Mm. Um, you know, and because that is the will of God for your mm. life. And if I can maybe just, you know, pick up this bread and pick up this, um, this wine, this grape juice that we have in front of us as Thank we you, enjoy a time of communion mm. together. Mm. I want to say I am deeply thankful and perhaps declare over your life, Lord, thank you that we can be thankful mm. in our hearts. We thank you for the privilege of being able to jo enjoy your body and your blood mm. that, that brings to us a sense of hope. It brings to us a sense of steadfastness um, mm, thank in you, Lord. every situation and in any circumstance we thank might you, be Lord. facing today. And so, Lord, we know that all of life is not always perfect. Mm. And regardless of what the circumstances mm. is that people might be facing as they partake in this moment of our celebration today, I pray, Lord, let there be thanksgiving in our hearts. Mm. As we take this bread, thank as you, we Father. celebrate with this wine, we thank you for this. Mm. Thank you for in son. Jesus yes. name. Thank so can you. I invite you, don't you want to take thank that you. bread and thank eat it you. with me just from thank a you. place of thankfulness mm. today. Thank you for your body, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. We give you thanks. Thank you, Jesus. You Lord, and for this wine, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. thank you that it brings to us mm. a sense of wholeness and enjoyment. Mm. We want to continually mm. feast on your joy. Yes, so thank you for this, mm. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. And Father, as we go into the Word now, I want to pray that we open up our hearts. May there be a sense of open receivedness mm. <laughs> uh, to receive your thank Word. You, may it not just be knowledge to our mind, but may it be impartation mm. to our hearts and our lives. Mm. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. I love that the heart of God and his mission charge to us as church remains to be reaching people with his hope and his love and his faith. And I recognise uh, that this has been a very strange time as we're still trying to find our feet about what church looks like today and in the future and in, in, in what lies ahead of us. Recognising that there's been not only a global shift uh, in, in so many of the spheres, but also for the church and how the church kind of operates and functions on a day to day. But here's the great news, guys, is that the church is still God's plan A. In fact, God doesn't have a plan B. He has a plan A and the church is his vehicle to bring, to usher in the kingdom of God into our world and for us as the Doxadale London Ministry, for us Doxadale Community Church, it is to be exactly this for the city here, that is our city of London. And what we're going to do is take a look at three key things that I really believe, feel, I have been challenged by in bringing this forward, that, uh, that our city needs at this time and in the ways that we are able uh, and with our hope and our faith and our trust in God, we will be able to see something more of the generosity of the Father shared, delivered, experienced uh, in our communities and in our, in our circles of connection and relationship and in our city. And so we're going to be looking at three key things, time, treasure, and talent because each one of us are able to relate to those and they are given to us so that we steward well and as we just look um, into this morning I really want to trust with you that what has stirred and arrested my heart uh, around, the, around the, the thought of time I really trust that God's Spirit also is awakened within you and that your spirit responds to God's spirit as we receive his word uh, in this moment. And so we call this talk, watch it, watch it. You see, cities, London, it's a, it's a power center, right? It's, it's a lo location of, of wealth and commerce, of, of innovation, of the arts, of, of education, 
and yet at this time it's so evident that that like cities around our nation and around our world and communities around the world it's taking a hit and so i i i've just been left with this this challenging question but god we the Doxadeo Community Church here in London on the ground. We, Doxadeo London, as a ministry to this city. What? What? What good is this little bit that I bring going to do? And, and I, I, I'm so excited to share this message with us this morning because we've got a message of hope to embrace and to take forward and to share outside of right now. And here's the thing. If God wanted to do something significant again, what is it that he needs? He needs you and he needs me to say yes and to take hands with him, to get involved in those things that are on his heart and to see change and transformation come through us. What a privilege it is for us to be able to enjoy this. The answer is us. The answer to generosity is us. And you know, it will take people. It's not going to take programs. It's not going to take perfect ideas. It's not going to take clever pathways. It's going to take people. It's going to take people to see generosity celebrated and shared in our city. And so I can't wait to share these scriptures with us because, because when I look at the word, it centers me. It, it, it brings me to that place of, of on those hard days when I don't feel up to it, of having a security, of on those days where I just need a nudge of encouragement, that it strengthens me. Uh, I, and, and sometimes, I don't know if you feel like this, but sometimes I feel like my life <laughs> is just like a drop in the ocean, just a small drop, like a teeny weeny tiny drop in the ocean. And, and there are days that go by and I think to myself, oh God, what difference is my life making? And maybe You've been asking that very question this week. And, and, and I, want to, I want to encourage you because, because here's the truth. Even though our lives are just a drop in the ocean, they are significant. They are significant. And as we partner with the Father, <laughs> we're going to see that significance just become far more greater and beautiful than we could have imagined. Have you heard the story of the young boy who used to live by the seaside? Well, let me tell you about him. He lived at home with his family and every morning before breakfast, around the table, he would get up and he would walk onto the beach and he would take a stroll along the seaside front on the beach. And he used to do that every day. And one day as he's walking along, he sees these millions of starfish that have washed up on the seashore. And as he's walking along, He's realizing that he's spent time walking this path before, thinking, what is it like for the seagull to fly over? What is it like to be a creature in the sea? What is it like to be a boat on the water? And now he's seeing that there is a, a starfish outside of its natural environment and something of compassion grips him and he, he picks up a starfish and, and he just throws it into the sea and he realizes that, okay, he's, it's got a chance. And he carries on walking along and he's throwing these starfish into the sea. And, and a man walks past and says, boy, what are you doing? What are you thinking? And he says, well, there's all these starfish. They weren't here yesterday. They weren't here last week. They've obviously washed up on the seashore. And the only way they're going to live is if they get put back into the water again. It's as if they're given hope. And so he bends down, picks up a starfish and he throws it in and the man says, but, but boy, what difference is this going to make to all of these millions of starfish? And the, the, the boy turns to him and he says, well, look at this. And he throws it into the sea and he says, it made a difference to that one. And he carries on walking. And do you know, it's like that. That is what our lives are sometimes like. We wonder what sort of difference is he making in the world? And yet... Yet, we have a significant difference to make, a significant difference to make. And so the risk that we have um, is actually, you know, when we come to the thought of time, is, is, is forgetting how important it is to work with it. 
Um, you know, it would be like walking down the beach and thinking, I haven't got time to, 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 to even throw one starfish into the sea. And that's the danger in which we end up living on a day-to-day -day basis. We end up watching it. We watch the clock. We're, we're careful. We're over careful. We're, we're rushing to try and squeeze everything in. And I recognize that there's going to be a challenge here because we're confronted with wanting to do more with our time, but also recognizing that there is a, a time limit that we have to work within, uh, within a boundary of. I want to read a scripture to you. It's a phenomenal scripture. It's in Ecclesiastes, an old book in the, what we call the Old Testament, the older part of the Bible. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 says that God has made everything beautiful for its own time. <laughs> he has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. This is our challenge because humanity has progressed and continues to progress in understanding incredible amounts of knowledge. I mean, what we know today compared to just a hundred years ago is, is it's, it's almost unfathomable. And yet what we recognize here from scripture and the wisdom of scripture is that, you know, we're, we're going to get to the place of hitting a limit where we're, we're, we're always going to be striving to find out the full picture. It's really only God who sees the fullness of everything and understands the fullness of everything. But this is what God has done. Not only did he create things in an orderly way so that beauty would come at its appointed time, but God designed us with a capacity to understand eternity and the impact that our lives have in eternity. That something of who I am today has affected eternity because I'm written into history and what I am involved in and what I, I engage my life in today has a bearing on the future and what happens in the future of eternity. It's an incredible passage of scripture. And as I read it, I was just wowed. I was wowed by it. 1 John is a letter in the New Testament. John, if you don't know John, John wrote the fourth gospel, okay? He wrote the fourth account of Jesus's life. You've got Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. But John also wrote letters to the church, uh, to the early church. And in his first letter to the early church, uh, in chapter two, John writes these words. He says to the church as an advice, as a wisdom, don't love the world's ways. Don't love the world's goods. Love of the world squeezes out love for the Father. As I see that picture, I see this like wet towel that's been wrung, right? It, it squeezes out the love of the Father. That's a picture he's portraying to, to the church. Practically everything that goes on in the world, wanting your own way, wanting everything for yourself, wanting to appear important, okay? It has nothing to do with the Father. It just isolates you from him. Now that picture I have of that rag, it's like this worn, tired, dried out rag. Now it's not an attractive picture. And John carries on, he says, the world and all it's wanting, wanting, wanting is on the way out. But whoever does what God wants is set for eternity. You see, when we partner with God in time, and in his timing and invest our lives in how he sees us to outwork and live our lives within the framework of the time that we have in which we live. <laughs> we are actually doing what he wants, setting out something of eternity. And we're city changers, right? So Dr. Dale, as a ministry, is a ministry that inspires a, a, a life that translates itself as a city changer, someone who brings the, the, the reality and the presence and the power and the hope and the, and the opinion of God into every area of life. And I've got a question I want to ask. It's a challenge. And I've got a statement that I want to make about watching it. Time. Watch it. The first thing is the challenge. What perspective do you look with? When you consider watching it, what perspective do you look with? In John, in his gospel, in chapter 9, 
we find a story where Jesus has just explained more of who he is and his purpose in, in coming into the world as the Son of God to redeem humanity. And in chapter 9, Jesus and his disciples, as they're walking down the road, they see someone who is blind, sat on the side of the road. And one of his disciples, it's interesting, asks him the question. He asks God to Jesus. Oh God. He says, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, who caused this man to be blind? Jesus' response is like this. Guys, I'm not quite sure that's the right question. It's not necessarily who caused this man to be blind. But it's the importance of answering the question of when you see some, something like this, a situation like this, when you see a person in a scenario like this, how are you going to respond with your time? In verse 4, Jesus says, we need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here. That's what he says to his disciples in that moment. He's telling them whilst I'm here with you, because he hasn't gone to the cross yet. This is before the cross and his death and the resurrection. He says to them, whilst I'm here with you, we need to be energetically at work about this. We need to be operating well with the time that we have. And as he encounters this man, there's compassion that comes in his heart. And what happens next is that he he heals him. He gives him sight once again. And he's no longer blind. And I suppose that's the, that's the challenge. That's the challenge to us. He's not asking the question of what caused this, but asking the question, what am I going to do about this? Because here's, here's two options. We can either watch it pass by. And if you've ever been to London, it's kind of like one of those scenarios when you stood on the platform waiting for the train to come in and you're on a schedule and you have to get to your destination and the train comes in, but there's no room to get in. It's packed to the rafters. It's not like that at the moment, but it's, it, it, it's like one of those trains that pull into the station. You can't get on. And, and so, you know, actually it just passes you by. Are you going to watch it just pass by or are you going to do something different? Are you going to watch it respond to you? You know, when you do actually get on that train and you take that train into your destination, you get off the train and you leave the station, you have to go through a ticket gate. And what happens is when you get to the ticket gate, you, you tap your card on the ticket gate and you watch the ticket gate respond to your interaction. You see the ticket gate respond to you taking that time to engage it, to enter into. Do you know the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us and he has been given to us to empower us as people to influence time, not just to watch it. Here's my statement in, in this word. If you are in doubt, about the possibility of generosity in this area. Watch it. Let me say it again. If you are in doubt about the possibility of being generous, of generosity in this area, watch it. What I'm not saying is like the idea of putting something on ice, right? You put it there and you let the idea cool and you give it time, you think it over, you mull it over, you know, you, you spend time watching whether this is going to be a good enough idea or not. I, I, don't, I don't mean that. I mean, give it time. Give it time. Give time to the lifestyle of generosity. If you want to find a scripture that inspires generosity, look no further than Proverbs chapter 11, 24 and 25. This is what Proverbs says. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. What an incredible scripture for us to take to heart today. 
And if you want to find an example of Proverbs chapter 11, maybe you want to, maybe someone, there's a story or there's an example that comes to your mind right now and you want to put it into the chat. Uh, you want to put it into the chat as you're watching it right now live. But if you want to look for another example of this passage, I want to encourage you to go and read the book of Esther. What an incredible story of a woman in a position where with no right under the under the under the, the legal way of working in the king's environment under no right she stepped in on behalf of others this is what happened esther uh, is 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 approached by a guy called mordecai mordecai is a leader of one of the clans of, of the Jews, and the Jews are being oppressed by this kingdom in which Esther now finds herself um, as a wife, of one of the wives to, to the king. And Mordecai comes to her because she is also a Jew. And, and he tells her, listen, there's, there's a plan to wipe out this people. There's a plan to get rid of and eradicate our people, the Jews. The man Haman, this evil guy who uses his, his weight, he throws his weight around um, to, to, for his own benefit. And he has a hatred. He, has, he despises the, the Jewish people. He, he, he dislikes them. He hates them. He wants to get rid of them. And he somehow wangles his way into making a law by which it looks as though the Jews are going to be wiped out. And Mordecai doesn't know what to do. He approaches Esther and he confronts her. And she, there's this discussion in chapter 4. You must go and read this story. It's a phenomenal story. And in chapter 4, uh, in this discussion, she, she's answering a reply of, but, but, but Mordecai, you know I can't go into the king's presence unless he calls me in. This is kind of like the way things work around here. And Mordecai, so desperate, seeing the, the gravity and the brevity of what's happening and the situation that's ahead, he says this to Esther in uh, chapter 4, verse 30, 14. He says, if you keep silent at this time, in other words, you've heard what I've just told you. You've heard the plan that's going to unfold. If you keep silent at this time, then relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Esther's so confronted by this. She, she sends a message to the people and she asks them, pray with me, fast with me, that when I go to the king and I approach the king, there is favor. And go and read the story about what unfolds. God delivers them. But listen, God delivers them because Esther was approached by someone who took the time to go into her environment and asked that she help to intervene is there something she can do from her position and she didn't want to and yet he challenges her listen maybe you're in the kingdom this kingdom this earthly kingdom as the wife to the king for such a time as this and i want to ask you how can you shift your time, okay? Because we all have the same amount of time in the day. How can you shift your time from something you watch into something that's worthy? You know, aside from doing very practical, simple things right now, such as signing up to the uh, City Changer Equipping Program that we're looking to be running in February of 2021 or or aside from planning in a power hour in your day to, you know, down tools and spend time with your wife or with your husband or with your children or on the phone to a friend or with a housemate. Other than those things that are simple and could be done right now. Do you know what? Maybe something that needs to happen is that you embrace a change of perspective, a change of how you see it. That you actually go and see every opportunity of occupying time not as just filling a slot <laughs> but actually of being the agent of change within that moment and that space 
that you know when when you when you register to sign up for the Christmas Lunch and Jesus project that we're going to be running in December, that as you do that today, um, you're not actually just spending time in this moment. You're actually investing and occupying a moment in which you can interact for a greater purpose. And when you come and you serve on that event, when you're packing those hampers, you're not just filling a time slot. You're actually occupying space because you've responded to the word of God as you've realized how eternity has been planted in your heart. And you have the opportunity to partner with God in drawing that out into your every day. In the church family, in your own family, and to our city. Wow. Thank you, Lord, that with you, thank you, Lord, that with you, we get to see a generous city in full view because we take hands with you and partner in generosity. And Lord, I want to pray right now for the ears of those who are listening. And I want to pray that as we hear these words, we utter together, Holy Spirit, work in us. Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord, may it not just be our physical ears that hear that, but our, our very beings hear what it is we're crying out to you for and saying, okay, Lord, yes, yes. And so I pray this. I pray that as we respond to your word today, that we will know with confidence that we're not only called and charged to be your church in our communities and in our cities, but we're partnering with the God of heaven. Thank you, Lord. I pray your favour, your grace. Thank you, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I realise that there's a whole load of things that we need to take out of uh, yeah. this word and actually yeah. consider going in, maybe even look back at and, and allow God that space to stir and open up in our lives. Um, where we can be, where we should be generous yeah. so that we see him work through our lives. Yeah. And um, I, I want to just in this moment, perhaps just pray uh, that there, there are many people engaged this morning. It's great to connect with you guys. And uh, we're going to take a short moment to pray. We're going to pray yeah. for our nation. We're going to pray for our leaders. We're going to pray for our government. We're also going to pray for our friends and, and the nation of the, of the U.S. Uh, There's they've a, got lot, their a lot that we can pray for. Greece, yeah. uh, Turkey with the earthquake this week. Um, yeah. I think there's a lot to consider. Uh, we want to pray for France. I mean, there's yep. things going on there in the social construct of the nation. Where you are right now, maybe... Uh, you haven't really known how to pray in the last 12 hours, 40, 24 hours. I want to encourage you just in this moment to perhaps open up your hands yeah. and engage with the Holy Spirit. Um, we're, walls are down. The, we, we don't come into a venue to meet with God. We meet with him where we are. Yeah. And so in this moment, I want to pray that God's Spirit fills you with comfort, so yeah. fills you with peace. And yeah, so this is what we want Lord. to pray, Jesus, that your Spirit, who is yes. alive, thank you, Lord. who awakens in us truth, awakens in us the good, Lord, yeah. that you want to bring through our lives into our world, um, who wants to bring comfort, yeah. who thank wants to whisper yeah, um, words of gentleness and hope. Uh, God, we, we want to pause right now and, and just where we are, say, God, thank you for our lives. Yeah. Thank you for this day. But Holy Spirit, we rely on you to be our portion and our strength as we consider the rest of our Sunday, but also as we consider the next few days. Yeah, thank you, Lord. And Lord, for all of the things that are going on in our world, yeah, and we're looking with, with eyes wide open at our world, um, our nation, our leaders, our yeah, government, you, uh, other nations, look at the United States, we look at things in, the, in Europe, on our continent. Uh, God, we can only but bring them before you in prayer. Mm. We know that mm. you see what's mm. going on. Mm. Lord, we invite you 
to, to bring out through your church, yeah. bring out through the leaders in our nation and in the nations of the world, the glory of God. Yeah. And sometimes, Father, we recognize that things are, are beyond what we can do and beyond what we might even have faith for, but we know that we can unite and partner with you in inviting you, in and ushering in the kingdom of God yeah. into our nation, you, into our city. And Father, I pray that um, out of this word, Lord, you, you ignite a newness in our own understanding of what it is to be a city yeah. changer here in London. Yeah. And I ask this in the name of Jesus today. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah, we trust that you have uh, enjoyed today's celebration. Uh, do remember that uh, church life is not just about this moment. There's a lot of things happening during the week, Matt. Tell us about some yes, of that. Yes, uh, on, on tomorrow evening, sorry, interruption there. See, we're not, uh, we're not Sky News, we're Doxedale Community <laughs> Church. We want to be real. And so um, we will cross over one another every now and again. Tomorrow evening, we have a host equipping evening for those yep. who are chat hosts. Now, there'll be some hosts who are already... Um, part of this team, but it's an opportunity for you to connect your life with your yep. time into serving the household. And so you can head yep. to our website, sign up and be part of that. It's just a 45 minute uh, Zoom call where we go through yep. some of the uh, practical things around hosting so that you can, as well as we do, greet people yep. who engage with us as a church, whether they're already family or whether they're new. Um, so that's tomorrow evening. Yep. I remember the first time that I had to host <laughs> online. <laughs> There's a sense of anticipation, but also, you know, you have to overcome uh, just your own sense of insecurity in that. And perhaps if you're watching this and you feel maybe, you know, I want to give this a try. It's very easy to do. And uh, I think through the equipping process, we want to help you to cross over some of the boundaries that you might feel uh, hesitant in, but to engage that which God wants to do through your life as well. Yeah, so do sign up. Brilliant. We've got City Changer Life groups that take place through the week. So if you're looking for community, you can connect into, uh, into yep. our groups. Um, our, our worship team meet every Thursday to pray, to, to share what's going on, our struggles, our joys, all those sorts yep. of things. Beautiful. But also to talk about how we can actually make um, more worship and music to God yep. um, and to celebrate that together. So if you're a musician or a singer or you're, you've got some uh, <laughs> skill with producing, we want to hear about it. Head to our Join yeah. the Team page yeah. um, and you can sign up and we'll connect with you in the week. But then just later on in November, we've got um, the Thanksgiving celebration. Yeah, the 29th. Now, this isn't pump, uh, uh, the, the Thanksgiving with the turkeys yeah, and yeah, the meal yeah. and it's Super Bowl and all that sort of thing. It's yeah, Thanksgiving yeah. looking back on 2020. Yeah. Even though this year has been difficult, yeah. we can see God's faithfulness in this. And so we're going to be bringing a scripture forward in that and just reflecting back on the year and saying thank you to God. And then we've got a ton of things coming up in December. Too much to mention now. You can yeah. go to the website. But one of the things is Christmas lunch on Jesus. Sign up to be part of that. Also remember that next Sunday at 10 a.m., even though it's locked down in the UK, uh, we'll be back uh, with our celebration. And here's the thing. You can invite somebody to be with you as part of this celebration. Maybe you want to arrange a Zoom call and watch this celebration with a few friends. It'll be a great way to get the word out and to spread something of what God's doing in this community into other people's lives. So do remember to do that and join us again next Sunday. If you're watching for the first time this morning, it has been great yep. um, because we don't watch. We participate <laughs> yeah, in something yeah. together. Um, and if, you, if you've enjoyed something out of this uh, morning, and you've sent something new with God, we would love to hear about it. Uh, we would love to journey with you and share with you and encourage you in your own journey. Um, but from Yanni and I and from us as a leadership team here yeah. in London, we just want to send lots of love to you guys. We know yeah. that we're not in the same room. Um, but God isn't restricted to physical spaces. Um, yeah. In fact, God is as awake and at work in us as any time in yeah. the history of the world. Yeah. And so we just want to send lots of love and greetings to you this morning. May you have a, a day full of peace um, yeah. as we just close off the celebration together. Yeah, we've come to the end of our celebration. I want to invite you, don't you want to sit up, uh, fill your lungs with some air? We're going to read a portion of scripture together out loud in the rooms and spaces where these devices are that you're watching on right now at the moment. Mm. It's just a declaration of His faith over our lives. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And so as we read this together to end off our celebration, uh, let's do it with uh, a sense of faith in our Thank hearts. Thank you, Lord. 
Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Amen.